Intel 3D NAND SSDs are based on a really long history of flash technology. And we were the leaders in terms of cell scaling as well as product innovations. What we deliver is aerial density leadership. Intel makes the densest NAND bar none. It's been true in the 32 layer, it's been true in the 64 layer, and as well as the 96 layer. There are two basic things under this. The first one on the left hand side is CMOS under array, where we are actually building the entire parking lot, so to speak, below the entire skyscraper. So there is no wasted area, and what does that give you? That gives you uh, aerial density. The second part is our uh, floating gate technology. So we have chosen to have a conductive poly. What that results in is, uh, if you look at it from the top view, which is the top graph, our pillars, our memory holes, are extremely symmetric, and uh, they don't have any overhead in them. So the top graph shows hexagonal packing, and it's very uniform. The cross-section confirms the same thing, that hey, you, re you really haven't wasted any space. At the bottom, uh, what other charge flash technologies have to do is you have to make breaks so that you can actually put the replacement gate material in. So I've tried to normalize the scales on those two things, and you can see that there is a break in the memory holes, and as a result, there is an overhead for the replacement gate, and that results in something close to 8 to 10% overhead uh, for a cell size. That's significant. And uh, the net result of these two and lots of other innovations that we do, but these two other ones I'm showcasing, is what I have as a die photo in the center. It is our 96 layer, three bit per cell, 512 gigabyte, four plane die, and it has, again, the highest aerial density there is for this technology generation. And now let me talk to you about uh, what uh, we're trying to do in terms of scaling. So we've started with 32 tier, 64 tier, 96 tier, that we are actually onto our next gen, which we call as gen four, uh, uh, with a 144 layer technology. This is significant because um, most of the other industry is marching to a 128 layer tier, and we are already marching towards 144. That again amps the aerial advantage, aerial density advantage that we have in terms of uh, floating gate. So that's a pretty big deal, but that's not all. You can see that the second and the third generation, we have done QLC. We have learned from it, we have improved it, and on the Gen 4, we are gonna lead with QLC. More number of bits leads to aerial density, leads to uh, more, more uh, uh, bits on a particular wafer or a particular rack. So not only do we have more layers, we have actually more bits per cell. So uh, that's our 144 tier uh, technology and uh, we expect to have it in 2020. I've told you all about aerial density um, in terms of uh, the um, uh, component. That's not enough. We need to innovate, again, at an SSD level to continue delivering uh, uh, aerial density to uh, the end user. So we have an SSD form uh, factor innovation. We call it the ruler form factor. It's called the ruler, and now it's an industry-wide thing. And it brings a lot of key features to the table. So, uh, it has different uh, uh, solution ranges, so you can have it in different form factors based on your rack. It has a capacity scaling, so you can actually put a lot more NAND into it. So just as a one metric, the E1.L holds about 2.6 more uh, uh, gigabytes per rack than even a U.2. So it's a very dense memory. In addition to that, the NAND has been placed smartly enough so that the thermal efficiency for cooling is significantly better. And hey, it's based on PCIe. This is the interface of the future. So walked you through innovations all the way from uh, process technology to SSDs, and the one word is density. We are uh, maniacally focusing on density in terms of architecture, number of bits, SSDs. So takeaway message here is that the march towards increased density is very much alive, and we are doing really well with that. And the various vectors we are actually doing is bits per cell, bits per die through our uh, choices of the architecture, it results in better bits per wafer, more bits per SSD, and more bits per rack through all the innovations that we do all the way from technology to SSDs. So <clears throat> that's the net message, and as a result, I think what I can conclude, I hope I've convinced you that the Intel 3D NAND technology will uh, help us drive leadership and aerial, uh, leadership aerial density, and as a result, uh, we should be able to address performance cost gap.